So what can residents do? Next slide. First thing, become a champion and advocate for equitable development in your community. You don't have to um, necessarily show up at every single community meeting to do that, but it does mean that when you do show up, you remain an advocate for equitable, equitable development and constantly think about these projects in many of the ways that we discussed here today. Next slide. And that means organizing and calling for equitable development. So in addition to understanding how things like zoning make it so that these facilities can locate in the neighborhood, understanding that you know we can't stop these projects most of the time. We can't stop them from getting our tax dollars most of the time. But what we can do is show up and say, if you're going to use our money, and if you're going to use our resources, we deserve something for that. And we deserve a better quality of life for that. So, so, what is equitable development, right? It is an approach to creating healthy, vibrant communities of opportunity shaped by intentional policies and strategies that ensure everyone can participate and benefit from decisions that shape their neighborhood and region, right? And this definition comes from the policy link. Uh, the problem is, is that the city of Detroit's right, economic uh, approach to economic development is inequitable. Right, it is because it assumes, right, as the MEDC just said, right, that nobody wants to come to certain neighborhoods. Nobody wants to come to uh, District Seven and open up shop. Uh, and that that the, the numbers simply don't bear that out when you look at the research. The research shows that businesses often choose locations because of the unique economic advantages it provides to a business. Right, and so when you disregard that that fact. Um, what you get is a narrative. What you get is an explanation used to get residents to feel like they have to accept any and everything, right, to attract businesses to their neighborhoods, right? You have to give them millions and millions of dollars to get here, right? And even when you consider, right, the, the, the amount of public investments that we do make, we don't even receive the purported benefits of it, right? For example, um, uh, over the last 10 years, in brownfield tips alone, the city has given away 1.6 billion, would it be? 1.6 billion dollars, right, away to developers. What has that bought Detroiters? Well, it's bought white gentrifiers, good paying jobs, and it has bought black, long time Detroiters, low paying service jobs, right? And, and that is explained by a recent study by uh, uh, Detroit Future Cities. Right, they have shown over the last 10 years, right, that white income, right, has increased about eight times higher than, right, the incomes of black Detroiters. Yes, so, and, and that's an incredibly important point that Theo makes because it, we've seen 1.6 billion of our tax dollars go to developers, but the disparities that we see in our communities are still ongoing, right? Um, and so I think um, to push back, as Theo said, on what we heard from the MBDC earlier, we want to remember that Detroit has value. The idea that nobody wants this facility, nobody wants to locate in this neighborhood, and so, you know, if this developer wants to do it and they're willing to spend their money and take their time, you better be happy. That idea is, is so outdated, because if that were the case, the, <laughs> the Vice President of Acquisitions for North Point wouldn't say things like, my goal is to make Detroit one of the top industrial markets in the country. I mean, if there were no market here to do that, would he make that statement? And this is a developer who's at the table with this site. So the idea that no one wants to locate here, no one wants this facility is simply untrue. And it often, those statements like that are often used to rob us of the power that we inherently have when it comes to demanding community benefits and demanding more and better from these developers. Next slide. So, um, where are where do the opportunities exist to have input on the process? We've given you guys a lot of information about how these facilities show up, a lot of information about you know what where your power lies, what we can demand. So, what do you guys do with all of this? Is that what you're wondering? Next slide. Um, first things first, contact your elected officials. We have um, two wonderful elected officials that put this meeting on tonight, Sylvia Santana and Rashida Tlaib's office. I, I, I see Larissa here. Larissa, if you want to stand up and let folks know you're here representing the congresswoman. Um, 
But definitely contact your elected officials and talk to them about these projects. We saw from the mayor's office, Mona Ali was here tonight. Call her, email her about your feedback. If you're thinking differently about this project with the information that we've given you, and you're thinking about community benefits, um, and you don't have time to stick things up, or you don't want to necessarily make those comments publicly, there's always an opportunity. When we talk about organizing and calling for equitable development, being a champion, it's, it starts sitting at home on your couch. Let me call my council person. Let, let me call Fred Durhall and talk to him about this project and make sure that this developer is going to do an environmental assessment so that I can make sure I don't have to breathe the noxious gases that they're having to deal with over on the east side right now, right? Um, and so the same thing, so we, we put all the contact information here for the mayor's office, Fred Durhall, Sylvia Santana, and Rashida Tlaib. So yes, I saw some of you taking pictures. Please do um, and contact these folks. The next slide. Other things that you can do are attend the Brownfield Authority public hearing. Um, this site has not gotten their Brownfield tax dollars yet, and so that's a really great opportunity for you guys to show up and advocate. There's also city planning commission uh, approvals that they still have to go through because as they shared earlier, this project has just been announced. So they haven't gotten final site plan approval yet even from city council, and city council also still has to approve these tax abatements. So understand that if we show up as residents and we begin advocating and demanding things, it makes it a lot harder just to rubber stamp this project and push it through. It makes it so that this developer has to slow down and consider, right, what we need here before they can just shove one forward, right? And, and that's what it's about. We can't stop it, but we can slow it down and make the process a more thoughtful one, which is at the very least what we deserve. Next slide. Um, so lastly, to stay in touch with the Detroit People's Platform, we talked a lot today about our CDO trainings. You can sign up for one by getting in touch with myself or Theo. Um, you can also join the Equitable Detroit Coalition if you want to volunteer with us. Um, you can do that, and then you can also follow face uh, us on Facebook and Twitter at Detroit People. Thank you guys so much.